Here we have a knee with an extensive damage following a skiing accident. The MCL has a grade 2 injury, while both the ACL and PCL are torn. Additionally, there is a medial bucket handle tear and a root injury of the lateral meniscus. Let's take a close-up look inside the knee and see how it appears after surgery. We are now looking at the medial meniscus. It is very interesting as you can see that the part of the meniscus has blood supply. Using the probe we can clearly observe how the meniscus dislocated, which can lead to locking symptoms. The bucket handle tear is on the borderline of the meniscus part with blood supply. Given the severity and the fact that the injury is fresh, we opt for a meniscus repair. At the back we can see the root of the medial meniscus, which appears to be intact. Now let's move on. In this part, what are we missing here? Who knows? Yes, it's the ACL. Normally the ACL is located in the center and the torn ACL fibers they already has been removed. And now we go to the lateral meniscus. And we see the partial root injury at the back. A, uh, a small flap is hanging loose while the part of the root is still attached. This will be further evaluated to determine whether a root repair is necessary. Here you can see the root repair and the meniscus now looking better and intact. The REA protocol for root repair involves 6 weeks of non-weight bearing mobilizations with a maximum of 90 degrees of knee flexion. The medial meniscus has been repaired as well. You can see the stitches here. The REA protocol for this involves 6 weeks of limit weight bearing 50% and a maximum of 90 degrees of flexion. However, since the root repair takes priority over the meniscus repair, the patient will remain non-weight bearing for the first 6 weeks with a flexion limit of 90 degrees. Now, who can tell me why the knee should not be bent beyond the 90 degrees? Let me know in the comments and don't forget of course to subscribe. Bye bye!